Cleanup efforts have been underway in Imperial Beach after the last storm left a mess of flooding and sand. Now they're bracing for the next one. And in Santa Barbara County tonight, the entire community of Montecito has been forced to evacuate. Scammers preying on SD Genie customers during a time when rates have gone up. Hurricane Ian in Florida caused huge problems for the bees. And if you're looking for a new path in 2023, you might consider taking a hike with a hawk. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. San Diego braces for another round as a devastating storm moving through northern and central California is blamed for the death of a five-year-old boy. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Marcella Lee. And I'm Steve Price in for Carlo Chiquetto. People are shoring up here their property. They're preparing for more flooding tonight. But Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavez says maybe not so fast. Carlene, what's the latest? Here's the thing. We're going to be the tail end of this system, so we are going to see rain. We are going to have periods of heavy rain, but is it going to be as bad as what's happening to the north of us? No, we That's have good. no flood concerns that are in effect right now. We just have to be mindful of this because this storm system is going to be getting closer towards us, but the bulk of that moisture is going to stay towards the north. Take a closer look at where that storm system is right now. We are starting to see a little bit, a minor clearing near Santa Barbara, and that's where we've been seeing a lot of rain. As mentioned, uh, the community of Montecito just flooded out, and then you're talking about that rain getting closer towards us. We are looking at a chance for showers once we get past about 10 p.m. for tonight. The bulk of the moisture does look to be tomorrow morning in the afternoon hours. Also a chance for some thunderstorms. And when you take a look at the rainfall totals with this system, some areas could see about an inch or more. You're talking about Fallbrook, especially North County. You're seeing those purple indications and even stretching towards the mountains. We could see about a half an inch and that would be for downtown. Also seeing that extend right along the coastline. Some areas could get some heavier rainfall than others. And as we just monitor their system, it's just something to be mindful of, but it's not expected to be as bad as it is north of us. So we'll go ahead and time out the rain coming up in your complete forecast. Steve Marcella. All right, Carlin, we'll see in a few minutes. Now, a lot of you have barely had time to catch your breath since Mother Nature's last powerful punch. As people across the county brace for this next storm, our Brian White checked in on the cleanup efforts that are still happening in Imperial Beach after last week's storm. I'm here at the south end of Seacoast Drive, where flooding and sand still remain from the last storm. City crews have been hard at work trying to clean this mess up. This bulldozer makes one pass after another, scooping up massive amounts of sand left over from last week's storm when ocean water flooded this parking lot during high tide. I come down here and I see this big ass bulldozer and they got, <laughs> they got tons of water and all the mud and everything. I've never seen anything like it. The parking lot sits next to some beach condos situated between the Pacific Ocean and the Tijuana River estuary. Access to the North Beach Trail is closed off here while city crews continue to clean up and dump the excess sand back on the beach. What we had was overtopping on our beach ends and then on South Sea Coast we had some street flooding. We lost a little bit of our beach from that, but from that last storm we've done a lot of the cleanup. The city's public works and Tidelands maintenance crews hard at work here, sweeping and removing every last bit of sand they can before the next storm arrives. I mean, the road's pretty dirty. I mean, um, if you had like a low car like I, like I do, you couldn't even drive through some areas. You had to, you know, go around. So, yeah, we'll see what this brings, but it's not looking too good. The surf picked up today with four to seven foot waves near the IB Pier, and it's forecasted to increase in size tomorrow. I see some huge waves. We were here last night. It wasn't nothing like this. I'm really surprised how big they are. While most people are staying out of the water, a few surfers took advantage of the growing swell. Are you looking forward to catching some waves? Absolutely. Yeah, I want to get out there. <laughs> As far as storm preparations in Imperial Beach, sandbags and sand to fill those bags can be picked up behind City Hall. And whether or not they're expecting flooding like last week, Fire Chief John French tells me this. It'll just be the storm rain. You know, we won't have the overtopping and things like that from the surf. So it'll just be, you know, whatever our, our storm drain system can handle, which, you know, if, as long as we don't get any big rains in a short period of time, you know, it shouldn't be any, you know, major flooding. In Imperial Beach, Brian White, CBS 8. Brian, thank you. Well, that storm to the north of us, it has turned deadly tonight. The San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Office says it's ended a search for a five-year-old boy. 
He was swept away in flood waters earlier today near Paso Robles in Santa Barbara County. Tonight, the entire community of Montecito has been evacuated. These pictures tell you why the area devastated by mudslides and flooding. The evacuation order comes exactly five years after a mudslide there killed 23 people and destroyed more than 100 homes. Right now, members of San Diego Swift Water Rescue Team are up in the Sacramento area. They left San Diego yesterday to help the crews there as they deal with major flooding. Northern California has been hit the worst by these recent storms, but there are still three rescue teams staying right here in San Diego just in case we need help with an emergency. Widespread power outages left hundreds of thousands in the dark over the weekend up in Northern California, and they are not out of the woods just yet. Our Morgan Reiner has been keeping track of the conditions there and has the very latest tonight. It's hard to put into words just how much of a beating the capital region took, so I'm not going to try to. Instead, I'm going to show you. I consider myself a pretty tall person. I'm about 5'8", and this tree is double that. It just shows you the strength of the wind. It just took this tree, lifted it up, and toppled it right on over. And look on over there. It's one tree like that after another. And this park right here is just one small piece of what's happening. Saturday night. What the f more than 560,000 households across Northern California lost power. Holy TikTok user William Begek told us this lasted for about three minutes in West Sacramento. Strong winds to blame. I think it's the fastest wind I've ever heard. I've lived here for 40 years. I've never heard anything like it was last night. Sunday morning, this is what people woke up to. We actually moved into the family room because we've got a pretty big tree uh, right over our bedroom. Trees across Northern California ripping up sidewalks, crushing cars, homes. Power went out. I had gone upstairs with a flashlight and all of a sudden I heard a very loud concussion and I knew right then this tree had uh, fallen over. The rain relentless. The Sacramento River a few feet from touching the Tower Bridge. To put this in perspective for you, here's a video our digital producer took of the river in August. Residents in Wilton once again asked to evacuate because while this is what it looks like today, this was the scene in that area just last week when floodwaters covered Highway 99. Helicopters helped complete a dozen aerial rescues this week and crews are standing by ready for more in the days ahead. 14 Californians have died over the last 10 days because of these winter storms. Governor Gavin Newsom with a strong message yesterday that the worst is yet to come. President Biden listening to the governor's request, declaring a state of emergency. Thanks, Morgan. And we want to see the weather where you live. Go ahead, log on to our app, share your photos and videos right there. It's really easy. Just go to the Near Me section at the bottom and click on the Share With Us button. It's just like uploading your photo to any social media account, and then maybe Carlene will share it with our viewers, and uh, we can take a look at what's happening, and boom, you're part of the <laughs> town. All right, Ped West is back open at the San Ysidro Port of Entry. It had been closed for nearly three years. As CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol tells us, this could help with the hours-long wait times there. The San Ysidro Port of Entry is one of the world's largest land border crossings. So having both PED crossings open is something to celebrate for many people I spoke to. I've been here since 430. It's been pretty slow. They say the line has been less than five minutes, a huge comparison to the hours they've waited at PED East. A lot say they're grateful for the shorter lines. I was ecstatic and I'm going to start using this, you know, mode of exit a lot more. Super rápido, fluye más. It's very fast and the flow of the people and foot traffic is more efficient. It's truly a huge help that it's open and I hope it stays that way. Ped West was shut down in the early parts of the pandemic, although it was used briefly last April only to process Ukrainian asylum seekers. Before shutting down, it was operating 24 hours a day, but it's now operating on limited hours. Right now, people can cross from Mexico into the U.S. between 6 a.m. and 2 p.m. You cannot cross into Mexico from this entrance just yet. We spoke to a local business owner who has been anxiously waiting for the reopening. She told us it took about three to four hours sometimes to cross the border, so many people didn't want 
to shop for just one or two items. She's confident this reopening, even with limited hours, will be better for her bottom line, as well as for other small businesses along the border that have managed to survive during the pandemic and post pandemic. Customers and Border Protection say they're working to restore services to pre pandemic status, which could mean back to 24 hour crossing. But in the meantime, remember, you can check those wait times online. It is expected to get a little bit busier as people start to hear the word is spreading that Ped West, yes, is finally open to the public public after three years. I'm Dana Marie McNichol from San Ysidro. Dan Marie, thank you. Six newly elected or returning San Diego County officials were sworn into office today. That includes the county's new sheriff, Kelly Martinez. Sheriff Martinez is the first woman to ever lead that department. Supervisors Nathan Fletcher and Jim Desmond were also sworn in today for another term. Last term, Fletcher served as board chair, but he is now supporting Supervisor Nora Vargas as the future chair. That will be likely decided during tomorrow's meeting. It's time for San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria to deliver his State of the City address. We will stream it live for you on Wednesday night at 630 on CBS 8 Plus. You can also watch it live on the CW San Diego, our sister station. Again, that's this week Wednesday starting at 630 p.m. Download the app CBS 8 Plus. And on Thursday, Mayor Gloria will be here live in studio to answer your questions. Those sexy streets he always talks about. Not so sexy after our last rainstorm. Oh, no, they are, <laughs> they are a big problem. Yeah. All right. Speaking of the city of San Diego, it's green recycle bin rollout starts this week. Coming up, a reminder of those new organic waste rules. Plus, how scammers are taking advantage during a vulnerable time for some sdg and &E customers. Why is there a seven year old with a bloody gun? Come on, think about it. And an update from police tonight after a first grader shot his teacher. 